Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Fund Birmingham Southern, also Sugar Baby in the House, and the legislature is pounding some red meat. You're breaking the ribs. Poor cow. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, columnist and investigative reporter at APR. Welcome. Hello. Hey, y'all. Well, uh, I was talking to a guy that's been covering the legislature for 30 years, and he said, this is the most bizarre session he has ever seen. I also heard from a few lawmakers this week that said if they had to keep passing this nonsense, that this would be their their last term in office. But Susan, they still voted for it. They still acted like it was the right thing to do. This week, uh, Governor Ivey signed into law a ban on DEI, uh, not not only with state institutions, but universities and mm-hmm. places of higher education, which will drastically affect what they can teach and do. They also, along with that package, passed a divisive concept, which does not allow uh, uh, professors at universities to really talk about uh, race, gender, uh, these things that uh, have shaped the country and the world are now going to be hampered at at universities where academic freedom of speech is now got a gag order on it. It does. And in their infinite wisdom, it seems like they think that not talking about these things will make them go away. We we have a complex society. It's important for people, especially students, to understand what those diversity are diversities are and how to coexist with them, not to just shut it all down and you know put blinders on it as though it doesn't exist. And that's what they're doing. They're tying the hands of educators to help, you know, kids and, and university students understand how these things fit into their society. I mean, Josh, we're one of three states now that that have this nonsense of banning uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, along with mm-hmm. Florida and Texas, those bastions of civil liberties. Uh, but I, what do you got to say to this? Well, I mean, first of all, I'd like to take you back to the uh, to the George Floyd protests and the 18 months or so that we spent uh, recognizing the struggle of uh, minorities and specifically black Americans. And uh, I want to say it was a nice 18 month run uh, there. And uh, then all the mediocre white people realized that, oh, whoa, 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 this level playing field stuff's got to go. Um, and so, you know, this this stuff that we're talking about, uh, the absurdity of it. Uh, the absurdity of saying to somebody that there is uh, an inherent in unfairness, and that's what they—that's that's how they push. That's right. Stuff, that's right. Is that there's a there's an inherent unfairness to white people because there might be a black person that takes their spot, or a Hispanic person, or another minority that takes their spot at a university to meet a quota uh, or whatever, uh, or you know some uh, in some other manner at the university because. Uh, of these DEI programs mm-hmm. or, or that the people are teaching about these things uh, and making spots for folks in, who, are, who are minorities uh, to, to get into these positions. And what that does is ignore an entire history uh, that has gone on in this country, which has drastically limited right. the participation of those minorities. Yes. All right. And so that's what we're trying to do with this is right uh, a, a historic wrong that has gone on in this country, which has drastically limited the amount of participation 
that minority folks can have in a lot of these programs and on college campuses. And so, you know, the, the reasons why we have HBCUs, you know, you hear white people all the time, right. well, why can't we have historically white colleges? Well, hell, you had historically white colleges, you know? Yeah, I mean, Princeton, oh Princeton, Harvard, Yale. Uh, Yale, all are historically white colleges. All of the colleges, all of the colleges that aren't historically black, they're historically white. Yeah, yeah, they know? are. Yes. Well, you know, the thing well, you know, and, and you know, that, Clarence Thomas got rid of affirmative action. So yeah. there you go. Well, the, one of the things that mostly troubles me about this is because the legacy of this will 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 spread wide mm -hmm. in our state. Mm -hmm. We want people to go to university and to schools to learn how to think. And this is one of the things that these lawmakers are saying they don't want you to do. Do not learn how to critically think or decide for yourself, let us tell you what you can learn and what you can hear. And that is inherently undemocratic, un-American. Yeah, uh, and I'm surprised they're not in the in the high schools and the universities in the history department pulling the pages out of the books. Yeah. This has to do with slavery, yeah. has to do with civil rights, has to do with any of that. Uh, each one of them having their own book and deciding what history yeah. should be taught. Fahrenheit 451, they'll be destroying all the books next, but I want to move on to how they're destroying the Voting Rights Act uh -huh. right here in Alabama. Again. With the idea that that this is, is to ensure uh, safe and fair elections, they're going to make it a felony offense mm -hmm. for anyone to go help their neighbor with a, 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 a mail-in ballot. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they have made some provisions for, for blind folks and, and a few other people. But by and large, you cannot help your neighbor fill out their absentee ballot or you will go to jail. Well, traditionally, most absentee ballots, most mail-in ballots are Democrat ballots. So they certainly don't want those. And an ability to limit uh, the, uh, the ability to limit the ability to do a mail-in ballot helps. Well, and Josh, I, you know, the, it, there's not enough Democrats that are going to fill out a mail-in ballot to make any difference in the state. I mean, but it is true what she says. It's about stopping black people mm -hmm. from poor black people from voting. Yeah, you know, there there is historically in the black community. Uh, again, we go back to the history of this state and history of this country in, in a lot of ways. Uh, there are typically a lot of efforts uh, on education and, and ballot uh, and election participation uh, within the black community. So there are a lot of organizations out there. Um, and those organizations have historically been painted as somehow corrupt right. or that they're doing something shady. Now, it's odd that none of them ever get get busted for any of these things. We don't, we don't have any sort of a uh, of evidence that any fraud has taken place in this absentee ballot process, but we're going to do it anyway. And I'll tell you where I think that you're going to have some problems uh, is while it's true that there are a lot of Democrats that, that participate in absentee ballots and stuff, there are also a lot of military personnel. That's right. That's right. Uh, who, who participate in that. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of those military personnel I know firsthand have uh, have taken uh, have taken a lot of advice from folks and they get a lot of help in filling out their ballots yeah. a lot of times. Yeah. So are we going to start putting military folks in jail for this? Yeah. Is that what's going to happen? Well, and well the, what it's going to do is scare people into not doing absentee ballots because they're afraid yeah. of anything that might well, yeah, happen and, and, because the law is written so loosely. And mail-in balloting in the states that allow it statewide are the most efficient mm -hmm. and safe elections. This is all just nonsense that has come up since bef b since 2020, mm -hmm. 2016, 2020. And this is nonsense that hurts people, real people. Yes. Anyway, you're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. It's time. Time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. Your home is your most valuable asset. But what if someone tried to steal it from you? Property fraud is one of the fastest growing areas of fraud in the country today. 
As a district attorney, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of property fraud. That's why I'm proud to support the Montgomery County Probate Court's REACT program. REACT is designed to protect your property and to give you peace of mind. By signing up, you'll receive an email notification if a document is filed against your property. This program is a game changer. It has the potential to prevent fraud and protect countless homeowners throughout Montgomery County. So don't wait. Sign up for REACT today and protect your home. Protect your home with REACT. Sign up today. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, it looks like uh, they're teeing up to pass a, a bill that will allow the state of Alabama to guarantee a loan for Birmingham Southern, mm -hmm. a university that has failed in every measure uh, to meet its uh, fiduciary responsibilities uh, that I have seen. And now they want to bail it out, not because it's the right thing to do, but because it's politically motivated. Mm -hmm. You have the Birmingham delegation, the Jefferson County delegation, that does not want to see Birmingham Southern close. And so they are twisting the arms of the lawmakers to get this done. And they want to go around uh, the, the, the current law mm -hmm. and, and they want to pass this thing so that we, the taxpayers, can guarantee a failing school will survive for a time. Right. <clears throat> they also want to go around common sense. I mean, this is the old adage of throwing good money after bad. And, you know, the, the, it's not like Birmingham Southern hasn't, hasn't been to financial institutions and tried to get a loan. Right. They can't get a loan. They can't get a loan. They can't. And it's not just one institution. It's multiple institutions. So at the state of Alabama is saying, okay, well, the banks don't think that you're viable, so hey, we'll just give you the money and see how it goes. Nobody wants to see it, a, a, a college close, especially a historic college, but the state of Alabama doesn't have that much money to start with. You know, if we had the gaming bill and all of that, I could see that. But this is this is a Republican principle of conservatism. This is what real conservatism is: right. is to look at a situation and go. That's a bad deal. Yeah. I'm not going to put my money after a bad deal because right. I'm going to lose it. But, hey. I mean, Josh, this is about as fiscally irresponsible as taking your money out and, and, and burning it, mm -hmm. uh, which is pretty much what I believe that the Alabama state uh, legislature is approving here is for the state to guarantee a burning of $30 million. It certainly seems that way. <laughs> um, you know, uh, it, it, honestly, it, it, you know, the fact that they can't get a loan from anybody, uh, you know, I, I have some I have some experience in covering colleges in this in this state. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I, I honestly I can't help but wonder what we would be talking about if this were one of those historically black colleges we mentioned in the, in the first segment. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, and what the conversation would be like. Um Listen, I don't want to see any college closed no. because God knows we could use as much education in the state as we could possibly get. Um, You're true, now. You know, man, it just, um, it, it honestly troubles me a lot to watch this go on while at the same time, you know, the state owes Alabama A&M $500 million yep. or more. Yep. Um, and and while there are other things that, that could be done with that money, and I understand it's a loan in, in theory, but one of the reasons young Boozer is not giving out that loan as a state treasurer is because he doesn't believe that the university has the means to pay it back. Right. And so, you know, I, I just, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm torn because I, I don't want to see a college closed, but God bless. They've done, they've done some bad things with money. over Yeah. There. Well, and, and their tuition is down so far. They mishandled Pell yeah. grants. Uh, this is a mistake of their own doing. <laughs> uh, now, I can tell you this, that uh, Treasurer Young Boozer had the ultimate authority to approve this loan. And after 30 years as a bank officer, exactly. he said, this is a bad loan. It's not the loan. You're just throwing money at yeah. it. They've already, made, they've already gone through $30 million, and we're expecting to get it back. Yeah, and so what he determined was, no, you don't get it. Yeah. So instead of going with the law that was written, they've determined to go around him. 
like they're doing on everything else. They act like that their way is the only way. And this is not representative government. This is this is veering off towards some type of authoritarian type of government where there's no compromise. There's just one way of doing things. But they're going to fight against young Boozer, which means they're also fighting against Governor Kay Ivey. Mm -hmm. But right now, I hear so many of them say, well, Governor Ivey's a lame duck. I said, well, she can do a lot in the next two years to make your life miserable. Yes, she can. But uh, they, they seem to have just taken this 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 notion, Susan, that they are, can do whatever they want to and nobody can stop them. They're bulldozing the state. Yeah. They're actually bulldozing the state and bullying people, even other legislators, yeah. into what they perceive yeah. as what they want yeah. or what they think is good for the state, and they know it's not. No, and I want to move on here. You know, Alpha Insurance, they mainly do uh, car and home. Farms. And farms and stuff equipment. like that. You know, back after we had all those those tornadoes a few years ago, you know, they canceled a, uh, and, and, and they canceled about seventy five thousand home policy, home insurance policies because they could, because they don't want to pay for that anymore. Now they want to get into the medical health insurance. They want to insure people under a brand new program that would not be regulated the way insurance providers are today in Alabama, like United, Blue Cross Blue Shield, and the other ones, mm -hmm. have to follow, follow very stringent rules. This would open it up for the, a Wild West insurance policy that would only benefit Alpha. Yes, it would. And it, this this is a, you know traditionally Alpha in that they want their cake and eat it too. Uh, they already have, you know, a concession for being an Alabama-based company, so their taxes, there's a concession there for them. And now they want to open it up and try to compete around the rules that everybody else yeah. has to follow. This seems to be a, a typical rule for Alpha. And I, my concern is that what is this insurance going to entail? What will it cover? My understanding is it won't cover pre-existing conditions and I, a number of other things right. that other health insurance providers have to provide. And they're going. it's going to end up with, with the uneducated you know, farmer at some point that ends up getting into this policy and, and doesn't know it well, has a health well, emergency well, and can't cover it. got about 350,000 members, and their members will probably be eager to get a less expensive insurance. But Josh, as we can we can read, it, it won't cover things like pre-existing conditions. It really won't cover things like mental health. And they can drop mm -hmm. your coverage for no reason other than they don't want to pay it. Yeah, it's a it's a terrible idea. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's uh you know if you're if you're a person out there looking for insurance, this is this is insurance that is it may cover you for like some basic things. Yeah. Um, but it, it's not going to be there if you have a catastrophic situation right. take place. Um, and and you know it, that's there's a reason why we have the regulation. There's yeah. a reason why the Obamacare regulations that went into effect, and that's what they're that's what they're offering here is an alternative to Obamacare, right. and everybody you know everybody knows it took them it's taken them this long to do this. And you know I, I'll say this too, it's um, you know I've raised some questions about whether or not this this insurance plan that they were offering was what led to them fighting so hard against the gambling legislation right, right, right. that was going to offer an expansion of rural health care right, options right, in the state. Right. Now, Alpha Alpha has maintained, you know, they sent, sent a message back saying, oh, absolutely not. This has no, absolutely yeah. nothing to do with yeah. it. But I can't help but notice that we're, we're playing off a lot of the same pool of people here uh, that would benefit from that rural health care yeah. expansion uh, and would have cost them nothing. And, you know, here we are. Well, and I, I, I don't, I wouldn't trust Alpha as far as I could heave their uh, 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 big old butt across the room. But anyway, we have to leave it right there. You're watching the V, the Voice of Alabama Politics. We'll be right back. Today, Montgomery is a safer city. It's time to shift the narrative and take control of our future. We're reopening community centers, remediating blight, and revitalizing neighborhoods across the city. And we're unleashing new opportunities. Over the past year, companies have invested a record-setting $2 billion in Montgomery and created 2,000 jobs. This is a new Montgomery. And together, we're reimagining the possibilities. It's time 
time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down. Be careful. Care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You know, Susan, I, I, there are some things that I just find hilarious and, and, and troubling all at the same time because you can't hold two ideas in your, your mind at one time if you're a thinking individual. But uh, You're talking about the legislature. Yeah, well, Let's don't get too carried away. So uh, there's a big glass, as you know, there's a big glass window, bigger than that, that separates the House floor from the press corps. Mm -hmm. And so if a lawmaker that's near that glass, you can pretty much see everything they're doing. You can see everything they're doing. So at a, 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 a House of <laughs> Representative member who shall, for the moment, go unnamed. But we do know who they are. <laughs> yeah, but was, was caught by the press corps uh, on a sugar baby site. Now, mm -hmm. for those who are unfamiliar with sugar baby sites, <clears throat> that is where wealthy men or men, men of means or women of means can go on and solicit somebody for sexual favors or uh, companionship, or just companionship. There's a, there's a site that you and I looked at to familiarize ourselves, and they have a slogan, don't they? Yes, it's where romance meets finance. So romance meets finance. So this individual, That's clever, right? who is uh, 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 one of the ones who's voting against, uh, you know, the, the allowing allowing. Uh, Wait a minute, let me get that right. One of the ones who's voting to ban porn mm -hmm. sites, mm -hmm. uh, he's voting to keep uh, sex ed uh, to abstinence only. Mm -hmm. He's voting for all these sex things. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, he's sexting with an escort. Right. And, and for those of you who have never been in the state house, you have the gallery up here, right? But the press corps is down here. We're literally on the floor. I mean, it's when they were in front of us, they're right here, just the desk away from us. So here, here he's voting for all these things, and he backs up to the window, thinks he's being private, and everybody in the press corps is going, ooh. And, of yeah. course, everybody's phone started blowing up yeah. right after that. But how hypocritical. Yeah. Please, with the hypocrisy here. Josh, this is back to what my uh, granny used to say, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> yeah, man, I hope that uh, I hope that, that site doesn't produce any frozen embryos. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know if you, can, if you can get to that or not. But uh, yeah, listen, it's yeah. I mean, what we what, we know this. We know this is what's happening. And, you know, this is why I've. I've suggested to uh, to some of my Democrat friends that they ought to they ought to put uh, put some uh, some bills in the works out there that would kick people out of the legislature if they're caught doing some of this stuff, you know, to counteract some of the nonsense that they're doing and to counteract the 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 uh, the attack on sex education that's taking yeah. place right now. Yeah. I mean, my God, you know, I can tell you where sex education is needed in the legislature. <laughs> no I mean, no kidding. Well, I hate it yeah. that they took Craigslist down because we used to have so much fun watching the rates of people looking for prostitutes of oh, yeah. all different natures here, yeah. all different yeah. all, persuasions. All, all proclivities. All proclivities during yes. when the legislature was in session. Well, I remember this was years ago where the press corps all got together. It was like uh, that guy's sweetie pie up in the uh -huh. press gallery. She's not wearing any drawers. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
<laughs> we can see everything down there. <laughs> anyway, it, it's just a shame, isn't it? I mean, it's it's pretty weird. And you can see him up there batting their eyelashes. Yeah. And I it know. ain't their wife. I know. But, you know, it's, uh, there's some bright little lawmaker you told me years ago. He, he said, something happens to me when I get to Montgomery. He said, you know, all, all, all these vices that I preach against all seem very good to me when I get into town. Yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah. say it the way he said it, right? Josh? No, no, please don't. <laughs> yeah, no, no. It's yeah, it's a it was it was it was a whole saying. And no, you're right though. It's a it, it's a it's kind of a way of life for a lot of those guys. And uh, yeah. and that's what I think troubles so many people is the hypocrisy that takes place um, among among those those folks. And and not just that. It's not just that hypocrisy. It's the the hypocrisy of of saying one thing behind closed doors uh, to your friends and the people that you work yeah. with on the other side of the aisle and then voting in a different mm -hmm. way yeah. and apologizing mm -hmm. to them and telling them, I, you know, I didn't have any choice uh, to do this. Yeah. And, and that's why we're in the shape that we're in right now. Well, and it's also, the, you know, the voting against uh, the rights of gay people when we know yeah. some of them yeah. are in the closet. We yeah. know this. Yes. We, we know, know this. Yes. All, Sweetie all the ones are. who have failed press conferences, all the ones who have failed press conferences to say that they're not gay, they're gay. <laughs> yeah, I, we know. I remember somebody's grinder going off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, we um, got a, we got about a minute left, but <clears throat> they're they're going to bring in, they're bringing a bill that says you have to verify that you're 18 or older. To, to go on porn sites. Now, I think this will eventually be proven. I wonder if Sugar Babies is involved. In well, I don't know if Sugar Babies, that's not porn. That's that's love, that's right. romance. But they want to pass this thing. They want to enter into other states to do this. Now, listen, I'm, I'm all for keeping minors off of porn sites. <laughs> what I'm not interested in doing is having f folks have to register their name and their state ID to a porn, or to a not to a porn site, but to a state database mm -hmm. that can be exposed. Of course, uh, and, mm -hmm. and and it won't harm these people, but it'll embarrass them. Of course, and uh, you know, so Josh, I mean, you, uh, you're gonna get the last word on this. How do you think it stands up? You don't want to hear what I've got to say about it. I'm telling you. Uh, you uh, wasn't wasn't our wasn't a lot of our state websites hacked last week? Or aren't they still currently hacked yeah, right yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this no, no, this is. You know, look. I think that that you're going, you're you're crossing the line of privacy uh, for a lot of people. Uh, and I, again, I, I'm I'm all for that as well. But there's got to be a way uh, that that this can be done uh, to prevent uh, those folks, you know, the minors from being on there. And you know, I think that uh, the Republicans have typically been the party of personal responsibility. Yeah. So maybe you know, leaving these things up to the parents to put in the parental controls at their house on their own Wi-Fi yeah. uh, could could be a good start. Yeah, I was just thinking that when you said that. You know, is there a way to stop under 18 year olds from getting into porn? Yeah, it's called good parenting. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't yeah. think they're going to get their parents' identity and go in there and put it in without their parents' knowledge and then they, and their name show up on a list somewhere, you're out of your mind. Well, that's going to have to be the last word. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them. <laughs>